Yes, I want to kill Obama. Welcome to episode 11 of the Power Moves Podcast. It is 11, right? I got that right? That sounds right. Uh, <laughs> we're not even fact-checking our own episodes now. It's too much to put up, to look up. You just stop at the intro and I can introduce the yourself. Intros. I thought you would take over the intro. No, you, you introduce yourself and then I jump in and I introduce myself. Okay. Well, I'm glad we're still hammering it out <laughs> even in episode 11. I'm Duncan. And I'm the attractive half of the duo, Colin. That's me. Duncan's got the face, but he ain't got these games. I, I, I don't got those legs. Got I don't do enough uh, squats. Uh, so it it's been a it's been a minute since we recorded. Uh, didn't do a podcast last week because it was holidays and we both went home and we're like, well, we we could record. We we could very well, have and done we that. didn't. But you live out in the ass end of nowhere, and I live in suburbia. Yeah. And I was like, I'm not going all the way out there. And I wasn't going out there. I'm not. I'm not taking a trip out to Deliverance. <laughs> so, what what have you been doing these these two weeks, Duncan? Not a whole lot. You what know a, me. What a I surprise. like to stay under my rock, like any kind of amphibious creep. Well, can you find salamanders under rocks? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So all like the time a, a kid. like a salamander, I've just been under my rock until yesterday when I had to actually go until one our office wrap up party, mm-hmm. and then so that went into like what time did you get any like when people were leaving the office party? Anyone say? Was it all at one, or did it trickle down into three o'clock in the morning, like the last couple oh, parties? I, oh, I haven't heard that. I just, I noticed at, I don't know, a little after midnight, there was noticeably way less people. Oh, yeah. So I assumed the party was going to naturally wind down pretty soon after. Yep. Nothing like seeing your HR uh, representative commit multiple... Uh, What's the word I'm looking for? Fashion atrocities, because those shoes did not match those shirt. <laughs> Ooh. I was going to say, just, there was a little unwanted touching sometimes. Cutting a rug? Cutting a rug. I, I'm just saying, when your HR, je- speci- when your HR, when your head she's of HR. Just, she's just HR. She's all of it. There's no multiple people. There's she's no multiple. just the one person. I'm just saying, when the head of HR is, you know... Doing some questionable things, maybe we should find another HR person. Nah. Well, yeah. I, now I, I talked about it on the stream, but I haven't uploaded the part where I talk about it yet. So if you didn't watch the stream, you wouldn't have heard the shit. Was it just me? Was the booze a little little watered down? Maybe the booze was mm, the booze was really light. Because, you know, we, because we only get so many free drinks yeah. for these parties. Everyone goes and pre, pre-drinks yeah. because the markup on the booze on work parties is enormous. Yeah. And, you know, I had a couple rum and Cokes. Nothing. I felt nothing. No. I was able to get up bright and early the next morning. And I was like, I shouldn't feel this way after a party where they handed me free alcohol. Well, two free drinks. Nah, it didn't matter. I, well, I still had more than the two, yeah. but still. I, th- yeah, no. Usually when I make a rum and coke, I can at least feel it. Even even the screwdriver I had. Nothing. I was like, what kind of sissy vodka is this? Well, exactly. If it was just me who thought it was a little weak, maybe it was just me. But I like I assumed you'd feel the same. Yeah. I heard two or three other people said the same thing. So I, I think... I mean, we weren't the ones doing shots. No, those people are crazy. Yeah, tequila shots. And those people showed that they were definitely maybe not having watered-down alcohol. Yeah. But, surprise, surprise, folks, when you animate for a children's cartoon, you have a drinking problem. (laughs) Yep. Anyway, then the next morning, I had to wake up bright and early for a 9 o'clock dentist appointment. Yep. Um... Found out I have ginger-like qualities, and they were like, "Now, 
tell us if, if the freezing wears off. And this is the next cup. This is the exact quote. Your kind tends to metabolize the freezing compound better than others. And I'm like, your kind? What do you mean, you people? <laughs> what do you mean, you people? And he's like, well, you're ginger. And I'm like, what? I mean, I have a little red in my beard, but I'm not ginger. You're close. Hmm? I guess. It's easier to tell which is your short hair when you have long hair. Yeah. No. Goes away a little bit. Yeah. And, uh... Yeah. Got my fillings in. Almost fell asleep while she was, like, had the drill going. I told going. you. No, that was the same thing as me. Like, I don't know what they've done to those drills, but... They are. It's like getting pat in the head. Yeah. I mean, you can still feel the pressure, and I've got a dental dam over my yeah. mouth. And it's like, this is a little weird, but they had uh, cold water cowboys playing, and I'm sitting there going, I could just fall asleep. I mean, it's no different than any other Saturday morning when I wake up with a bundle of cloth in my mouth. Uh, yeah, so... And then I went, and was like, well, I'm already in the shopping center. I might as well... See if I can find anything I want to pick up. Maybe keep it under a budget. Kind of, like, spend only a certain... No. I went out and I bought uh, the heart... Uh, Sunstone is a series I like. And I've liked it for years. And I've never heard of it. About a same-sex couple who are into bondage. Not selling it. I need a little more than that. Don't get the book. This is an it's audio all show. <laughs> it's all I got. Um, it's basically about a same... Like, it's been a long time since I read it. And it's one of those ones where I was like, oh man, if this ever came out in comic form, I'd, I'd definitely go buy it because I love the art. I love the story. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then the artist was like, uh, hey guys, um, I'm doing this thing with Image Comics and um i'm putting out a comic or i'm putting out a not a comic but uh the paperback volume mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and um i was like oh boy i'm gonna get it but then they're like nothing i because we lived literally in the small like a tiny little town it i never saw the light it never saw the light of day so it was impossible to get and at the time, I didn't have a credit card or think that it would be on places like Amazon or uh, eBay because, yep. one, I was a stupid, petulant ch man-child, and two, I didn't quite understand how buying things on the internet worked yet. How do you not know? You're because an adult. I, this was, like, back when I was... 18, 22-ish range. Okay, that's fair. And I had never bought anything online before, so I was... So all that kind of mass media... Uh, what? You know, when the media is like, oh, you shouldn't buy online, you'll get your credit card information stolen, blah, 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 and all that, like, fear-mongering. Because my parents were... hadn't... My parents are... My, my dad's fine. My mom's fairly uh, computer illiterate. Mm -hmm. She once download... She once was, like, trying to download a song, and then the whole screen went blue or red with yellow text and a big uh, hammer and sickle. Oh, I've seen those. Yeah. Yeah, those are the good viruses. Yeah, so that's how my mom destroyed a computer once, trying to download... Uh, music, music from LimeWire. The good old days. The good old days when we knew how to pirate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so basically, after that long tangent, I don't know where I am, but... Um, you went shopping? I went shopping. Book. book uh, Sunstone. Uh, the Ghost in a Shell manga... Uh, volume 1.5, which I think deals... With everything after the first manga. Why is it 1.5 then? Because it's kind of like a side story. Fair. That deals with 
like I think in this one I haven't read too far into it but the major is missing so this is a few this is kind of like a book without the major and they're just like where's the major <laughs> and then I picked up Rat Queens volume 3 I, I think I have that somewhere well volume 1 anyway I don't mm. think I've touched it I like it <laughs> Uh, volume two was done by the same, was, the art was done by the same artist from Sunstone, that same artist as Sunstone, and I think when I was just finding out about Rat Queens was when he was doing the art for it, and I was like, oh, I need it! <laughs> and, um, there are some drastic art changes, like, the first book is vastly different like oh i guess it's it's not that different well it's definitely not his style like even the cover is kind of different yeah covers are a throwaway but yeah it definitely like his style is very different from uh the first book and the third book is vast like a vastly different art style than the other the volume one or volume two yeah not a fan of that neither am i i kind of wish but i mean when you're not like a big comic property well and, and i get it like is my knowledge of comics is you were signed on to do so many issues at a time. Yeah. So, you know, shit happens. I mean, you see it more in, like, your traditional comics. You'll see the artists change every, you know, six or seven issues. Other than that, not a whole lot of anime this... Uh, I know it's the spring season, and spring seasons are kind of... The... Well, you got the the three giants are out, you know, that uh, neither you or I are, are watching, I assume. The what? three giants. Well, you well the you know the three anime pillars right now. You get uh, uh, Hero Academy season two. I am two. watching that. Okay, I love you got that. Got Attack on Titan season two. Not watching that. And you got uh, shit Boruto. <laughs> Again, not watching that <laughs> either. Um, I'm not watching any of them. My Hero Academy is pretty good. Yeah, I I remember seeing a preview. Before the first season even started. And I was like, oh, that looks cool. And then I never looked at it. Yep. And if you like anime about small town, like, just ass, the stick town in the ass end of nowhere anime, definitely watch Sakura Quest. It's real good. It's about... I, I don't know if I want to spend 20 minutes of my week watching how I grew up. <laughs> Well, no, it's about this little town that's trying to revive itself. Mm -hmm. And this girl from Tokyo who, in the span of like one uh, like one day, went through 30 different uh, job application uh, interviews and didn't make a single, like, didn't get a single callback. So she's like, well, I guess I'll take this job out in the sticks. Does she raise bees? No, she does not raise bees. She is the queen of the town. That's not funny. And she has a chained chupacabra <laughs> that is this old guy from the tourist center dressed up as, like, a chupacabra. And I'm like, I like this. It, it's a good time. And I... It's kind of that weird fascination of I enjoy anime that takes place out in the country. Like uh, Silver Spoon... Or, uh... Now, do you actually like the rural setting, or is it just you like that it's different? I like that it's different, and I kind of enjoy the rural, rural setting. Um, at one point, my community was very much so rural. Like, there was a farm, there was a place to buy... Duncan, you live in the nice part of now. the biggest city in that province. Now. Now, at one point during my early childhood, there was no one living out there. 
and then the whole oh living by the waterfront is amazing and just everyone just bought up as much property along the water as they could my roads weren't paved until i was 16 <sighs> years old i didn't get a door to my i didn't get a door to my room till i was 18 well, and moving out of well that's fine So how was your day? Or I mean my I weeks. always I always say day and I mean weeks. Well, we'll start with day because I've talked enough about roughly when we record. We usually record these on Sundays at Sunday afternoons. But Duncan had the crazy idea of uh hey, you want to come over right now and that was at 9:30 in the morning. And I was like, "Okay." I was literally just opening my eyes and was like <laughs> I'm, I want to get shit done this afternoon. And uh, so I was making my way and I was like, it's still early. I'll grab a coffee. But I wasn't going to go to Tim Hortons because they're out of the way. Mm. And the coffee kind of tastes like dirt now. Eh, I'll still drink it. No. It beats not having coffee. So, but I was I like, all right. I'd rather have dirt. Th- there's a Starbucks that I actually walk by to get here. And then I just looked in it and I'm like, I... I I don't belong there. And just kept walking. And then I was like, oh, there's another coffee place. Uh, it's like, I don't know, a block away. I, I don't remember what it was called. But I was like, I looked inside. I was like, I, I, I don't belong there either. Because it was even more hipster than Starbucks. Oh, then I should take you down to the Wired Monk. Oh, jeez, no. <laughs> then again, my favorite coffee place in the city is pretty hipster. But I've claimed it, so I don't care. Okay. But, and then I was like, alright, can't go there either. And then I was like, well, if I just walk farther, <laughs> if I just... there's a Tim Hortons past your apartment in a couple blocks. It's like, I'll go to that one. And it was closed. <laughs> so, what? I am coffeeless. What? Yeah, it's closed. Tim Hortons closed on a Sunday? I know. That's what illegal. Are, what are all the good little <laughs> Christians gonna do? Just not go to that one, I guess. No, okay. But I was gonna say that's kind of like a tradition back in Quiz Francis when church came out was let out, all everyone would just get in their cars and it would just be a mad rush to the Tim Hortons drive-through. People would die. Oh yeah, I'd believe it. But other than that, I mean, played a handful of games, but I won't talk about them too much because they're going up on the YouTube channel. So I'll stay shush about those. I liked both of them. I guess that's all I'll say. Okay. Uh, watched some movies. I watched the newest Smurf movie. Now, I keep this... Wait, that's already out? Yeah, it came out last Friday. That's the one where they're like, oh my god, there's more girl yeah. Smurfs. Yeah. Smur- uh, Smurf in the Lost Village. Mm-hmm. Where, you- yeah. Uh, now, I-, I don't talk about it much because it, I don't know, looked down upon, I guess. I enjoyed the live-action Smurf movies. Oh, no. I thought they were okay. Okay. I actually never saw the second one, but I, I enjoyed the first one enough. That's the one with uh, Patrick Harris? You no, know, Patrick Harris, yep. Uh, so I was like, all right, I want to watch a movie, so I'll watch Smurfs, because it's new and the only thing I haven't seen yet. It's pretty good. There's some actually, like, actual good jokes. Uh, I mean, it's not the best animated movie Probably even in theaters right now, because I imagine there's something else playing. But, if there's not, it's the best one. But, and, uh, okay, now I understand the Eiffel 65. Yes. To spoil a section, they play Eiffel 65, I'm blue in that movie. And boy, do they know how to play to their, you know, audience that's in their 20s. Oh. Then I also watched a tonally 180 from that movie called The Gift. Okay. Came out two years ago. It's a thriller starring... Ah, oh shit. Is his name Jason Bateman? He the guy from that show that people like? That I'm blanking on too many things in a row right now. The show... Arrested that... Development? Okay, yes. Is that Jason Bateman? Because um, it's that guy. Yes. Yeah. It is Jason Bateman. Yeah, starring him. So not a guy you would expect to be starring in a thriller. Okay. Um... It was super good. It's just about a family. Uh, it's Jason Bateman and his wife, played by who knows. And they just kind of befriend 
this guy who is immediately seen one that you meet him you're like oh he's a little off but then the story just gets you know weirder and weirder and it actually the, there's good plot twists because you're like i know where this is going and then it goes somewhere else and then it switches another way and it switches around again damn good movie would recommend it's on netflix i'm pretty sure that's all i did for movies and like i said uh was there any other games i played that i didn't stream i don't think so no there, there was not but comics I was reading some comics I won't go into it because it's still too new to spoil I think but uh, Saga Volume 7 real good yeah as always anyone not reading Saga you're missing out arguably the greatest comic going it's the one I enjoy the most yeah. anyway but I checked out a bunch of new things i checked out a series called uh, little guardians don't really know what it's about yet art style is kind of nice it looks like um if you've ever seen the show whack foo no i think that's what it's called it kind of looks like that whack foo i think it's called whack foo it's this little french cartoon oh okay i know what you're talking about now but so I'll, i've only read the first issue of that I'll buy another one, maybe, to see where it goes. But the main thing I wanted to talk about, because it's Marvel's kind of pushing them to be more popular, because anyone who's up to date on the whole goings-on over at Marvel Comics is they're trying to get rid of the X-Men. I thought it was because... I thought you were going to talk about how Marvel was like, oh, people aren't buying our comics because they don't like diversity. When, in fact, the truth is uh, people aren't buying their comics because people don't buy comics. Well, I don't think it's people don't buy comics. I think it's Marvel's quality of stories. It's just not there. Well, and that kind of rolls into this, is they're pushing the Inhumans. Yeah. Because Marvel doesn't own the movie rights to the X-Men, so they're trying to make them not as cool and trying to bring up... Make the Inhumans cool because the Inhumans TV series is currently being filmed. Yeah. At least I think it's a TV series. But their their writing quality just isn't. It's terrible. Yeah, I'm reading Royals. I read the first issue, and I said that was trash. But I said I'll I'll give it another one. Uh, also trash. I mean, uh, infamous Iron Man, the one with Doctor Doom as Iron Man. That one, that one comic is the one that I'm like that every week or every month I'm going to get that comic. We'll see, we'll see my, because other than Saga, because I only buy the volumes, the one I'm looking for every time it comes out is actually Marvel, and it's She-Hulk. Only. Yeah. I think that one's pretty good. But yeah, as a whole, Marvel is not doing so hot, I think, with a lot of their stories. Because I'm not really loving uh, Captain Marvel right now, either. Mm. But yeah, I know nothing about the Inhumans, literally nothing, other than Black Bolt is a piece of garbage. I think that I power say is stupid. A piece of garbage. He's just overpowered. I think it's stupid. Like when you can literally defeat Thanatos. 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 Than Thanos. There you go. By just opening your mouth and destroying a planet. Well, it's introducing all these characters, and like I said, I'm reading issue one. I should not need to know anything going in. And, I mean, it's not a spoiler, because they talk about it in the first issue, is that um, their leader, I don't remember her name... Medusa? Medusa, is dying. Okay. And I'm like, yeah, but I don't care. I don't know who that is. And she has a shitty power, too. It's just her hair is stronger than steel. Woo-hoo! Their current Inhumans push. Maybe I shouldn't be reading Royals. Maybe there's a different Inhumans comic I should be checking out to uh, like them. But Royals is... Not doing it. It is not. No, sir. But, on a brighter side, a bunch of news has happened. Well, yeah, two weeks. Yeah. I hope we have something to talk about. I, I got a bunch. You got, you got things? Oh, no, I don't. Right, of course you don't. Alright. Well, I'll just go in order for once, because normally I jump around and get myself confused. Yeah. So... And also, I write them down in order that I come across the story, so. First up, I know I sent you a video of this. 
Agents of Mayhem. Volition's next game. Saints Row. Looks good. I don't know. I was on the fence when they first showed it off, but then the video I sent you, which was just them playing for an hour, I was like, okay, there's game here. I don't know if I like it. Um, maybe it's because, I don't know, it just kind of feels like they're trying to uh, trying to ride the same coattails. I mean, it's of... clearly a We Made Saints Row game. Yeah. Now, they've said it's not technically canon, but it's in a Saints-inspired world, and it yeah. shows immediately. Yeah. I, I like... I really liked Saints Row 3. Yeah. Saints Row 4 was just them taking, like, the Saints Row theory... Uh, games and just tossing it out the window and being like, let's go crazy. Let's get uh, who they got one of the voice actors, Keith Davidson. Keith Davidson. I don't know. I just know his name's thrown around. Jesus a lot. Christ, that game had like a powerhouse of voice actors. Uh, now, did you play Saints 4? Yeah. Okay. I didn't, so I don't feel tired of them. To me, they weren't. Now, I know from looking at Saints 4, I was like, I that's too far for me. Yeah. I didn't want to touch it. So, to me, they're still in a spot of, you know, wacky fun. And I'm not tired of it because I haven't played one since Sensor 3. So, I'm like, okay. I'm ready to go in there again. I don't know. Um, I think my view of Saints Row has kind of been shifted now that I've played Grand Theft Auto. Mm -hmm. And as much as I thought the wacky fourth wall breaking humor was fun... I do kind of want a more grounded, well, more grounded in quotation marks story. Yeah. Like, crime games aren't one, like, true crime streets of LA kind of thing, the true crime series, um, wit, is just, I don't know where I'm trying to go with this. You're talking about John Woo's The Stranglehold? John Woo's The Stranglehold, um, Sleeping Dogs, was it? I like that game a lot. I could never really get into it. I mean... But I'm also not a Grand Theft Auto boy. Yeah. So. But, um... It just seems like a lot of other crime-related... Crime games... Crime-themed games. The story's not there. Yeah. And, um... Then you have Grand Theft Auto. Where the story is amazing. Mm -hmm. The gameplay, while not as... It feels kind of blocky, uh, tanky. Well, game's old Yeah. now. <laughs> game's old now, yeah. Um, but the story was amazing. And then, and it was more grounded in reality, sometimes. The peyote trips were weird. Never touched it. Don't yeah. know. Um, and then you have Saints Row, where it's like, hey, let's start off seriously, but as the games go on, just go cr nuts. Like, the superpower... I think what killed it for me was the superpowers in the virtual reality. But that doesn't matter. This isn't Saints. This is Agents of Mayhem. I get that. But there was one part where the character's trying to go through back through her drunken rampage. Mm -hmm. And the jokes just weren't funny to I me. I was just looking at the gameplay. I was mostly listening to it on mute. Oh, okay. No, I was listening to the audio, and the girl they were playing was... The girls were cute. It's basically Zarya if she was a... Rolly Dur roller derby. derby. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but um, she's basically a meathead. I... And I couldn't, like, I couldn't listen to her dialogue. See, I was going to play it, because I think it looks interesting enough. It looks different enough and she it, has a triple jump with an air dash that's but, insanity well and the biggest thing that helps it for me is it comes out in august which is games don't really come out no in the summer so it's a good time i suppose if you want me to buy something however a week later the uncharted 4 dlc drops <laughs> and that's a problem because i imagine agents mayhem will be a, a meaty ish game 
Yeah. I doubt I beat it in a week. And now I know you don't care for Uncharted. <laughs> but this DLC literally grew legs of its own and is now a full length game. Jesus. Uh if you lucked out and I think you bought the season pass, you're still getting it for free, I think. Okay. So good on anyone who bought the season pass. But if you didn't, it's Don't now buy when season passes. Some companies get the free pass. I think Naughty Dog is one of them. They've never let anyone down. And by anyone I mean me. <laughs> but that game was supposed to be the DLC was supposed to be like, I don't know, probably people assumed would be similar to their other DLCs, which is, you know, an hour or two cost ten, fifteen bucks. Mm-hmm. Uh, now it's uh, eight or nine hours, and it's forty dollars. And you're like, oh, you really just took a concept, and uh, you really, I, I guess they just fell in love with it. Which, okay. if it's more Uncharted, I'm there. And if you pre-order it, pre-order it on the PlayStation Network, you get a free copy of Jack and Daxter, which is a real good game that I imagine most people have played by now. Not me. Oh, then, I, then I'd say it's, it's worth checking out. I don't know. Like, I was never a big fan of Jack and Daxter or Ratchet and Clank. Well, I don't know how good the game would be now. Like, yeah. Probably not very good, honestly. If Now, if you've never played Ratchet and Clank, that new one that just came out last year, that's a good place to start. Because that's a good game, and it's actually, you know, remade for today. And not just, here's a clunky PS2 game. So because I know it really bothers you when Nintendo does this, Nintendo stopped production of the the, the NS Classic. The NES Classic, yep. Or the NES Mini, whatever it's called. And I love that in their kind of reasoning for it, they said, we have been listening to the consumers and our fans. Mm-hmm. And... I can't help but feel that Nintendo, at least Nintendo of Japan, doesn't know what it's doing when it comes to the rest of the world. Now, I'm glad you brought this up because I I have a topic that branches from that. And that the rumor is they're not canning it to be Nintendo. Okay. They're canning it because the Super Nintendo Mini will come out this year. That is the rumor... Slash leak. I think it'll probably happen. If you would have just told me this, I'd be like, I don't know, man. The the mini, mini NES just came out. But when this comes out right after they say we're going to stop making that one, I'm like, okay, that's probably going to happen then. Now, do you think it's going to be mired by the same production limitations? Oh, of that- course. That's what Nintendo does. False scarcity means more people are talking about it. And it means, you know, a lot of people, people who shop are stupid. Yeah. When you go into a store, you might not actually want something, but if you go, oh, but that thing's hard to get, and there's one right in front of me. That's exactly what I did when I saw <laughs> Sunstone, and I was like, oh, hardcover Sunstone, and then I saw the price on it, and I was like, oh, fuck. Uh, now, will I pick that up? No. Probably not, because I, I mean, I had an NES and an SNES growing up, but I wouldn't say I was a a quote-unquote gamer Okay. when those were out, so like I'm, which I guess really I'm just making an argument on why I should get it, because I missed a lot of the important games. Yeah. Like, I didn't play, like, Metroid. I doubt I beat Link to the Past, though I'm sure I've claimed otherwise multiple times. I've really just played Punch Out and Super Mario, and that was pretty much it, because I was four. But I probably still won't get one, because I'll never find one. Yeah. Do you think they'll do a Mini 64? Because if, uh... if they do a Mini 64, I'm picking that up. I want to play some Jet Force Gemini. No. No. But no, I... If they do, I doubt we see that next year. Yeah. But, I don't know, honestly, it's weird that they're doing it. I mean, they're... When they have a virtual console on... Exactly. Now, the Switch... I don't think the Switch still has it yet. 
Oh. Because they said that's coming. But, I don't know. I Honestly, I mean, the Switch is selling fine. Yeah. But, if they just told people, hey, because I imagine the Super NES, and if there ever was a 64 one, would be similar of, here's just 20 or 30 games or whatever was on the NES. Why not just say, there's a hundred or more on the Switch Virtual Virtual Console? Because that's kind of what you should be doing as a business is pointing them towards your your thing that just came out, yeah. the thing that you want people to buy, as opposed to this little console that's I mean, yeah, they're just shitting it out and it's a hundred bucks and I'm sure they're making bank off those. Oh but... yeah. Well they're up to like three hundred dollars now through third party. Oh that doesn't surprise me. But yeah, I don't know. Nintendo's being Nintendo. Yeah. I hate this false scarcity shit. Well, it was really bad when they were doing it with the Amiibos. Yeah. Are they still carrying on with Amiibos through the Switch? Uh, the, the Switch does have Amiibo support, so... I think that's the dumbest thing. Like, I get... They're neat little figures, but... They're neat figures, but honestly, it's the way Nintendo has gotten away with... And now, th- this is nothing new. I've said this to many, many a folk. Nintendo is literally the scummiest company... In gaming today with its DLC. Yeah. But they get away with it because they come with a cute toy. That you'd get in McDonald's. Yeah. Now, will I shut my mouth if the the rumored Binding of Isaac Amiibo is a real thing? I sure will, because I'll fucking buy it. <laughs> Reading through these topics, I probably, other than just writing them down, should have also organized them to have, you know... All the gaming things together and all the not gaming things together. <laughs> hey, Star Wars, that was a big thing. Star Wars Celebration was uh, last weekend? Weekend was it? Yep. So we got the the trailer for episode. Or oh, the that's for right. We're eight. in May. No, it's April. What? It's April. I thought. It's currently April. I thought it was like in May that the Star Wars Celebration. No, it just happened. May the 4th. Oh, shit. Never make... Even though I know what happened, you're making me second-guess myself. <laughs> well, I always thought, you know, Star Wars Celebration was May the 4th. That would make sense. Because, you know, that dumb thing that comes around every May 4th, where everyone's like, may the 4th be with you. No, Star Wars Celebration was April 13th, so, okay. Because every time someone says that, I just lose, like... A part of me dies inside and like, please stop. But please you are right. Talking. Now, have you seen the trailer for episode 8? Or the teaser? Uh, Did no, I didn't. Okay, don't waste your time. I know a lot of people are loving it. Uh, I didn't care. Okay. And uh, I mean, I watched the trailer for Battlefront 2. Well, that's what we're going into next. Because you know what? I watched both. Trailer for episode 8, trailer for Battlefront 2. Fuck off, movies, because Battlefront 2 looks awesome. Yeah. And it is taking my favorite angle of the story, which is, let's make the Empire be the good guys. I love that angle, because it isn't taken enough. And now, I will admit, it's incredibly hard to do. Mm -hmm. Because even your... I mean, it's basically common knowledge at this point that the Empire is the bad guys. Uh, I mean... The Imperial leaders are, I mean, playing through, uh, I don't know, uh, I can't really say playing through the Old Republic, the MMO, um, because I'm not sure what state, like, how comparable the Empire is in the Old Republic compared to the new movies. I'm not sure what it is. Like, if it's the same... Well, it's not even technically the Empire in the new movies. It's the New Order. I suppose, yeah. Well, no, but, but for Battlefront, is it... Battlefront is going to be covering a time between episode 6 and 7. So it's still So the it Empire. may cover the transition. I don't know. Okay. But it specifically refers to them as the Empire, so... Okay. Um, where was I going with this? But, um... Anyway... When I was playing the MMO, uh, fuck, the Old Republic MMO, Mm -hmm. um, go figure, I picked 
the Imperials. Yeah. Because I just prefer them over the happy-go-lucky rebels. Yeah. Or the Alliance, or whatever you want to... The Jet, like, the Jedi are just boring, and I just enjoy the Sith storyline a lot more. Um, but you definitely see... It's definitely the higher-ups that are that megalomaniacs. Well, uh, uh, obviously, just... with any movement, it's the, the top that's the problem. But similar to the, the Star Wars Aftermath book, which I still have not finished, because don't read real books that much anymore but it it does the same thing of like it portrays these two characters who are good people but they grew up on a planet and it's the same thing for the main character in battlefront 2 you just grow up in a place where everyone's like man the empire's doing real good like because you know control the media propaganda blah 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 so they don't think they're doing anything wrong when you work for the empire but that does make it really hard to write a story where your main character stays with the Empire. Because anyone who would sit down and play a Star Wars game is obviously a fan to some extent. And it's hard to feel good when you know you're doing the wrong thing. No. Not for everyone. But as a whole. Rule with an iron fist. Control everyone. But that game... It just need it, it hit, crossed all, all the T's, dotted all the I's of everything I needed, which was multiple studios working on it. Okay. Getting different studios, and I wish I would have wrote down who's doing what, but like, hey, yeah, got this it. studio, you're good at this thing, you're doing space battles. This studio's doing this, you're doing the multiplayer. You, this studio's good at narrative stuff, you guys are doing the single player. I'm like, that's a great idea. Yep. More studios should do that. Collaborate. Um, and the most important thing to me, it's canon. God which, damn it! That's the biggest deal for me. Is I don't give a fuck if something's not canon. If it's not canon, I don't care if it wins a. I don't know. I don't know what the big prize is for literature. Pulitzer? No, that's journalism. Oh fuck yeah, that's right. <laughs> um. But anyway, some writing award of greatest book ever written. I'm like, yeah, is it canon? They go, no. Uh, Well, then I don't care. I don't care. New York Times bestseller? Nah, that's easy. That's why every book is one. I was going to say, that (laughs) explains how Sunstone was able to get on. Yeah. There was another new game. It was teased. Okay. Two weeks ago and then announced this week. So, as far as this news goes, it actually worked out that we didn't record last week. Two weeks ago... A bunch of people saw it. You, I think you saw it too. We got this cool little animation from Bandai Namco or Namco Bandai. I always forget which one they go oh, by. Uh... We got the little prepared to dine animation. And everyone's like, that looks cool. Oh yeah, the animation looked really cool. And I was like, oh, I'm all set for this. And then, like, screenshots it, it, yes, started and now... trickling in. And I was like, oh, that... and Actual screenshots. Actual for... screenshots. And the armor... And everything was really edgy. And I was like, that, I kind of like that. But then you look at their faces and it's just full on anime moe. So, the game, uh, being published by uh, Namco Bandai, Code Vein. Yeah. It's not a great title. No. But it's about anime vampires and it's. Anime Russian vampires. And it's Dark Souls, basically. Now, I don't know how Dark Souls it will be because it's being made by the team that did Freedom Wars and God Eater, which, granted, were limited in their design because they were Vita games. Yeah. Now, but if this is a whole open world similar to Dark Souls, I'm there. I'm not into the Monster Hunter type, like, zone games. Yeah. Where, like, here's your town zone and you warp into another area and here's, and then your here's fight zone. And... Field one, yeah, field I, two. That's not for me. I get that those games are crazy popular, like Monster Hunter or Toki Den, but they're they're not for me. So, I kind of hope this is more Dark Soulsy, which, honestly, I didn't think about this until right now. The big rumor going around, or, well, not rumor, um, they said the Dark Souls 3 DLC that came out two or three weeks ago, that's it. Yeah. They're done. Which, that's fine. They yeah. made 
Dark Souls 1, 2, 3. DLC and they were, for all of them. And then there was Bloodborne and Demon Souls. They've made enough of those types of games. Like, yeah, go go do something else. That's fine. Yeah, no, and they want to go back and try and do uh, fucking uh, the mech games. I can't remember what they're called. Uh, oh, shit. What were those called? Shit. Uh, God damn it. Not Fort Mission. Uh, Armored Core. Armored Core. And that alone was just like, yes, give me more Armored Core. It's been since 2011, I want to say. It's probably even, probably even been longer than that, wouldn't surprise me. But, now, a lot of people didn't believe them, and myself included. A lot of people think that there's reason to believe we might get another Bloodborne, because that did really well. Mm-hmm. But if this game is more like Dark Souls and less like Monster Hunter, I think that leads to they might actually be done. Because now there's a new studio doing them. Which, hey, that's fine. If it's good, you know, good game is good game. I'll, I'll go where good game is. Yeah, it lo- does look kind of dopey and edgy, but if it plays fun, that's all I care about. But in, in, in weird gaming news... Yeah, 2013 was, I think, Armored Core 5. Well, that's way more free- recent than I thought. Yeah, but it's still been a while. Okay, so actually, because I was going to go into one story, but we got more esports talk. Okay. Weird news, still gaming related. <laughs> or just, uh, here's a game that's coming out. Let's do the weird news. I'm kind of interested in that. Okay, have you ever played uh, Dog Shit in Disc Form? Two Worlds. No, I have not. Have you seen it? I have. I watched uh, Pro Jared play Two Worlds and then Two Worlds 2. Okay, Two Worlds 2. Came out six and a half years ago? Yeah. It's getting DLC. (laughs) (laughs) What? Yeah. Uh, It... In... It looks like Two Worlds 2 because they didn't... So complete and utter jank. Oh, yeah. It's jank as hell, but... A lot of people are really happy about it. Why? Because they're like, yeah, like, I, I really, like, obviously they made a sequel. That game has some level of fan base, whether it be ironically... Wait, 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 wait. Two Worlds 2 was on the Xbox 360, wasn't it? Yeah. So are they making it the DLC for the Xbox? Yeah. Are they re-releasing it? No. For the no, Xbox Not that I read. One? No. Still has an Xbox 360. Duncan, a Sega Genesis game came out this month. <laughs> All right, so this isn't a stretch. Okay. <laughs> uh, but yeah, a few people are excited. They're like, "Yeah, I'd love to go play that old game again." Which I think, in a way, is a neat idea. If there's a company that didn't do so, much, so will I have DLC for Diddy Kong Racing in the future? I mean, probably not. But I mean. I'm, I'm trying to think of a game that is in a similar situation. Maybe not in quality, but just in a... I don't know. What's, what's a game you like? And don't say Grand Theft Auto. Um, I don't care when it came out. Mass Effect 2. Okay. What if all of the original guys who... Or most of the team from Mass Effect 2 went and made their own studio and somehow maintain the rights and just years later they're like hey we're making mass effect 2 dlc wouldn't you be like yeah you know what i'd like to play mass effect 2 again no because then that would mean i'd have to either you know find a playstation 3 Mm -hmm. because okay well ignoring that because let's face it um the disc reader thing those don't last in ps3s um Recently, my dad was like, yeah, no, we had to throw out the PS3 because it wasn't reading anything anymore. But, but I mean, ignoring the complications with actually trying to play that game again. Yeah. Wouldn't you love to be like, oh, a game I like has new content? I don't know. Because I think in I've, theory I'd at like At this that. point, I've played Mass Effects 1 through 3 so many times that I kind of just want it to... I kind of just want to lay it to rest. Yeah. Because if I go back to it now, I'm going to remember all the... Like, I'm pretty sure it's just the nostalgia goggles on. But I really love those games. And when I was playing them, there were problems. Like, not at the, not as much as launch... Push, uh, Andromeda. Andromeda. But there were some glitchy issues. Yeah. 
but I mean, at the time, it's like, oh my god, this is amazing. Like, the characters were not great, but I mean, for the time, they oh, looked okay. amazing. Okay, little different then, because you said it earlier. What if, um, I guess I'll say Platonic, because that's most of old Rare. Yeah. Just said, um, hey, we just uh, made a whole new campaign for Jet Force Gemini. And uh, here's the game on PS4. Wouldn't that be awesome? To just get new content to a game that's, you would have assumed, like long lo- dead. Lost to time. Yeah. So, I think it's a neat idea of, especially when I, I doubt that developer has done anything since Two Worlds 2. Yeah. I think that's a, sure, why not make DLC for a game if that's all you have to do? <laughs> it's just unfortunate that it's Two Worlds 2 little bit. Um, now, the less news to talk about is uh, the new Call of Duty game was revealed. Oh, World War Two. Call of Duty We're World War Two. We're storming the beaches of Normandy again? Yep. Uh, oh, boy. I think it's set to be... I don't know how many times I've gone up those fucking... That beach. I think we're supposed to get an actual trailer sometime this week. 26th, I think, so that's Wednesday. So, cool. Yeah. We'll, we'll see. Now, I'm curious, as a someone who plays call i can't say i played cod i played not the newest one but the one before that black ops 3 yeah sure no it was two ago maybe anyway they're fine like they're good shooters i just don't care enough to play one every year yeah but the diehard fans have been saying go back to world war Two. so as from a marketing and sales standpoint i am interested to see if this moves the needle not that Call of Duty really needs help sales wise. Yes, they've been dwindling, but they're still some of the best selling yeah, games yeah, ever. They're not like they're still selling like millions yeah, of and, copies. And a lot of people are like, well, you know, they really should listen to the fans because they're losing sales. I'm like, yeah, but they're still selling like bananas. Yeah. Like they don't really need to listen to them. And the final news, it's not set in stone, but it is it has put the first peg on the march for esports to be an Olympic event, I don't like that. I like. I've talked about my n- not caring for esports on here in the past, and I, I'm an adult. Yeah. I can deal with it existing. That should never be in the Olympics. I will riot. <laughs> well, Canada is definitely not going to win anything there. Well, that's not the point. There is legitimate sports. That are not in the Olympics. Yeah. This should not be considered a legitimate sport. Now, don't get me wrong. If I had full control of the Olympics, there's a few in there I'd get rid of. There's too much swimming. There's too much running. Turn everything into a blood sport. Ooh, yeah, you know what? I'd I'd be alright with that. Wrestling with polar bears. (laughs) But, I mean, there's really not a ton to say about that. Everyone on steroids and cocaine. Yeah. And then just watch the bloodbath. Uh, TV news. I, sh- I sent you the trailer. Meant nothing to me. Cloak and Dagger trailer came out. It's pretty neat. Um, now you were audibly excited. So I assume you know them. Some. I, I Some. know nothing about them. No. Uh, yeah. Now. They're kind of, they're kind of uh, elusive in the Marvel Universe. Well, okay. Some so I watched buff- the... F- like, during the 90, 80s and 90s, they were a little more prevalent, but recently it's kind of been... they. I don't know what they've been, what Marvel's been doing with them. No, well, if a TV show's coming out, expect a comic, I imagine. Yeah. But um, reading through the comics, com- <laughs> comments on uh, that, ooh, they were like, of course the white girl gets to like light powers and the black guy gets yeah so dark so who powers. anyone who doesn't know uh cloak and dagger is uh cloak is ty and he has the power of darkness and can absorb people into his cloak and teleport and uh tandy is some little white girl and she has the power of light and she uses it to like have light knives daggers now knowing literally nothing about them when i watched the trailer i went that's fucking dumb 
uh, in, a little bit, but I mean, a and lot made of... the immediate assumption that they were hollow Hollywooding it, you know, like making it a little more appealing because it's rich white girl meets poor black boy and they fall in love and but they're special and I was like ugh, but then I read the Wikipedia page on the comic. I'm like, oh no, that's pretty spot on, I guess. Pretty much doesn't doesn't appeal to me. I mean, comics were never really great literature. Well, no. I mean, there are some exceptions, but you don't really see them winning awards most of the time, especially comic can like care. Yeah, but why, why can Cloak and Dagger get a series when Section Eight? Nothing. No one wants a Section <laughs> Eight. Con- I'm sorry, but Dog Welder. That's the Do- most. I'm so Wel- glad. What what was that YouTube channel? Uh, we'll give credit where credit is Comics ex- Rob from Comics Explained. That I think video Rob. on showing me who Section Eight was, amazing. Oh my god! Everyone go to Comics Explained and look up his video on Section Eight. Um, it would be within the last. It would be. It's currently his most recent video, so you wouldn't have to dig deep. Oh my god! If you want to hear about the most the amazing m- characters, the worst of the worst. DC superheroes. You got... I, Like, one of them has just got a drinking problem. I already forget all of their names. There's, what, Six Pack? Dog yeah. Welder? Um, Jean, Fri- Jean du Baton? Yeah. Uh, Friendly Fire? Friendly Fire is good. Yeah. And then there's the... Uh, this is... Who was the guy who just said Bueno? I do don't remember what <laughs> what his name is, but apparently he is an expert at stealth. Good. And um, his his power is that he fatally violates people from behind. And then and then whispers bueno. And then whispers whispers bueno. But knowing where that image that bueno image came from, yeah, that. Like, now, nah, it's amazing. That's it's, great. It's, it's, but Dog Welder is fucked up. I'm sorry. That whole welds dead dogs to people's faces. To criminals. To criminals' faces. That's real fucked up, DC. Are they going to be coming back in DC Rebirth? I, don't, I better be. So, there's one of my easily favorite news stories of the year. That I want to talk about. But I'll start with the leading question. Do you believe in ghosts? Not really. Demons? Not Poltergeists? really. Poltergeists? Not really. No experiences? No. I was hoping to milk this conversation a little longer. <laughs> I was hoping you said yes. Or maybe... Okay, well, let's disregard all the no's I just said. Yes, Colin. I do believe... Well, no, because now there's nothing... Because you have nothing to add if the answer's actually no. Well, no, let's get into this. What, what, what? Well, uh, now I'll just go right to the story, because I don't really believe in them either. Okay. There's been too many ghost stories where they go, what was that hard cut to commercial break, and uh, come back and, oh, it was nothing. That, I think it's fair to say they don't, they're not real. What, now, would you want them to be real? No. I think I would. We live in a city where just that's true. One our whole, day, our whole city blew up. And if they were real, there should be ghost sightings everywhere. But like, I'm the whole waterfront just exploded during the Halifax explosion. Well, I mean, if you stand up on Citadel Hill, there's a map that says if you look over here, all the way from this to that was just gone. Yeah, no, the. Th- thought of ghosts being real just every building in halifax should be haunted now the reason i bring this up is uh folks over at warner brothers okay in a bit of a legal battle over the existence of ghosts what so warner brothers uh are the what are they still called publishers with movies and not just games i don't know (laughs) Um, producers, producers is the word I'm looking for, okay. uh, of, of the Conjuring films. Now, I think the Conjuring 1 
is one of the best... I won't say one of the best. One of my favorite horror movies. I think Conjuring 1 is fantastic. Conjuring 2, weaker, but still good. And I didn't watch Annabelle because it was a different director. But anyway, do you know anything about those movies? I'm going to guess no. No, because I am a little baby and I can't stand horror. Okay, if you believe in ghosts, they are true. They're true stories. Okay. Um, now, I know this from a, a past relationship of mine. Was very much into ghosts. And so that's how I found out about these people. Uh, there, there's self-proclaimed demonologists. Yeah. Ed and Lorraine Warren. That have been doing ghost investigations and demon hunting. Uh, and um, exorcisms. Yeah. For decades. That many horror movies are based off their alleged true stories. So they did The Conjuring, uh, Annabelle, um, The Haunting in Connecticut's them. Amityville Horror was them. So they're big names attached to horror stories. If Well, I mean, whether or not you believe it, them investigating it is true. Yeah. But way back in the 80s... Oh boy, are we getting into some dark shit here? A man by the name of Gerald Britter, Brittle, Gerald Brittle, wrote a book on them called The Demonologists, and he had the exclusive rights to Ed and Lorraine's stories. Which, as we now know, is not super true, because they keep making movies based on their work. Yeah. And now, this is kind of a lawsuit that he's just striking while the iron's hot. Because, like I said, there have been multiple movies before The Conjuring based on them that he never sued for. But his point was that he has the exclusive rights to those stories, but you can't own exclusive rights to true events. So he's suing Warner Brothers for $900 million to say, if you can prove that ghosts are real, <laughs> I'll drop the lawsuit because I can't own the rights to a true story. Jesus. So that's my favorite thing going on right now, and I imagine it ends exactly how we all know, which is um, he just stops eventually, because I imagine he has less money than the Warner Brothers as a whole. But yeah, ghosts. Yuck. 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 We running out of steam already? Uh, we sure are. I only got uh, like one or two things left. Uh, well, it's it, it's official. Happy, uh, I mean, it's a few days late, but happy 420. Weed's legal. Or will be, officially. Next year. Next year. But in they Canada. finally have a date. It is confirmed. It is a thing that's happening. Um, July, in, in July, I imagine Canada Day. Yeah. Um, now they, they've got it all figured out. They, did you see what the legal age will be? Because that's not what I thought it was going to be. Is it like? 20? 18. Oh, boy. And, I mean, we, we've rambled on about pot on here enough, I'm sure. I don't remember if we recorded it or not. But I know we've had some long-winded pot rants yeah. on this couch. I mean, I can't stop it. It's a, it's 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 official. Yeah. It's going to be legal next year. I, I guess... Congratulations, Canada. I mean, I, I think it should be legal. But does it I, really I just, deserve a congratulations? I think so. Okay, it probably deserves one in 2019 when we assume it does, you know, generates the country money. Mm. So I guess the congratulations is kind I of really, early. I really hope they regulate the shit out of it. Yeah, I imagine they will. I hope people really have to jump through hoops to get it. Because that's the only way it's going to come out. Well, apparently, one of the main reasons why it was pushed back is they're going to really bunker down and work on roadside tests, which there are currently none for Whoa. marijuana. Okay. So, because the, the original word on the street was it was supposed to be legal this year. Yeah. And then they pushed it back. And that is the word on the street, is they're trying to figure out a roadside pot test first. Which doesn't matter what your opinions on pot are i think everyone can agree don't drive impaired doesn't doesn't matter what the substance is oh yeah i mean you can't like take cold medicine and operate heavy machinery yeah 
So I can completely understand why they'd want to do more tests to kind of figure out, like, shit. I mean, it's practically, le- like... It's it's in it, a weird gray area where, like, I mean, even just us, but I'm sure anyone in a remotely sized, like, well-sized city is seeing clinics pop up where you just go in and say, uh, hi, doc, I'm sad, and I go, hi, here's sad. Here's some weed. Here's some cush. But hey, it'll make someone happy. And it uh, really won't change my day-to-day life that much, so I, I just don't care. <laughs> well, that, that's all I got for news. I, I, got, I got topics to cover as a whole, but you got any news? <laughs> Me do work? I know I ride you enough to do something around here. <laughs> I mean, that whole G2A thing has just been a... Took my... one Every time something in the... Up in news comes up and it's G two A related. Just that uh, the the song from Evangelion, end of Evangelion, stays playing. Just tumbling mm-hmm. down, tum like like they had like this uh, big conference mm-hmm. with G two A, kind of quote unquote on trial because most of the jury was made up of game developers and them going. Well, we give a cut back. We give a better cut back to game developers than anyone else. And from what people were describing, it was it was very close to becoming just a brawl. I mean, it really should have been. That would. I mean, look, it, it's one of those things where, in practice, or in, in theory, I should say, in theory, yeah. in theory. I don't have a problem with them. Yeah, but when you're... It's the way they're going about it that is the problem. Yeah. Using stolen credit cards to buy fraudulent... <laughs> to buy uh, Steam keys. Yeah. And then someone had... Uh, like, they did a like a live Q&A kind of thing. And someone showed how they themselves could kind of break the system and do all this... Like steal credit cards and or buy keys and then buy fraudulent keys and then resell them, and then they got them banned from that Reddit. I Reddit, I don't know how Reddit works. And then just everyone lost their minds at G two A, but um, G two A like during the conference recently, um. They were taking flack. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, they pull out the diversity card. They're like, we have a very diverse, you know, group of people working for us. uh, People of different races. Women. And it was the weirdest kind of move. Because you could see they were just pinned against the rope. And then they're like, uh, uh, what do we do? What do we do? Uh, we have... We are a very diverse workplace. And our employees are but and it just kind of felt like a not so much a hail mary but kind of like a diversion to kind of slip under and try and get a body well shot i don't think it was really to get a shot that is just a an against the ropes move of like maybe this will help because i mean in you know in the in these times obviously diversity and everything is important so, th- but they just assumed but if when we're you... diverse, that means we can't do wrong. Yeah. But I've been watching a lot of Epo. Hajime no Epo, the rising, or the fighting rising. I finished that off. It was great. Mm-hmm. That whole story arc where they go back to World War, back to after World War II, fucking great. Never watched it. It's pretty. They know how to animate punches. Met Studio Madhouse, great work. I love it. I was, I was watching some pretty good anime last night about fighting. It was called uh, the UFC. <laughs> I, I like it more than Hajime no Ippo. Have you ever watched Hajime no Ippo? Nope. <laughs> yeah, it's real good. It's real good. But I, like I, I can imagine as a fan of the actual sport, I don't know how much I could enjoy it because. I mean, it, it's, it's a shame to say, 
But fighting is typically not that cinematic. Oh, but those punches are good. <laughs> those punches are real good. I, I'm sure it, I You know what? I'm sure I would actually like it. I mean, there's a lot of monologuing between punches. That's fine. Like, I have to throw my this punch with just all the spirit and chi I can must. My force of will alone will drive my punch into my opponent's face. I mean, yeah, like I said, I'd probably like it. There's an anime I watched in which there was a boxing match that took over, like, two episodes, I think. And that still to this day is the most anime thing I've ever seen in my life is they were playing in a pitch black room yeah with a spotlight just a single light above them and this guy was he was just losing yeah and he said well I bet I could see in the dark better than this guy so his he wanted to shut the light off but didn't know how so he gathered up as much energy as he could and punched up yep and sent the salt crystals in his sweat flying out like a shotgun to bust the light and that is to date the most anime thing I've ever seen (laughs) and we've watched we've watched Mecha throw galaxies at each other and that's nothing compared to that for me I think that was the most ridiculous laugh out loud thing I've ever seen God bless anime. <laughs> you know what anime that's from? Reborn. It sure is. <laughs> Jesus. Episode like 40 probably. Oh, uh, so well. Far enough in that you'd never get to it. No. And far enough left to go that you would stop if you made it that far. What? What? Persona 5 deserves better. A translator's take on a subpar script. Well, I mean, we can speak for that as uh, two people who have not played it. Yeah. I really want to play it. But then I went out and bought three comics that totaled over $100, and I was just like, oh, I guess I'm not getting Persona today. Um, Yeah, I I don't know. I I haven't heard any complaints. I mean, it's probably the same kind of thing. The English dub just isn't hitting. Yeah. Yeah. Which, I mean, at least it's not as bad as uh, the latest Fire Emblem. Not the one that's coming out in May, but uh, Fire Emblem Com- Conquest and Bloodlines? Or fam- I don't know, Family? Where one of the characters just professes their love for pickles. Oh, And right. that is their character. The pickles. The pickles. Well, because we're really just scraping the bottle of barrel here, uh, and, and I've talked about it enough on this podcast, Avatar 2, James Cameron, finally, a new how, release how, date. How, okay, new release date, what are we talking? Was set to come out in a few months. Yeah. It's been wait, pushed, wait, but... wait, 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 it was set to come, Avatar 2 was set to come out in... December two... 2017. We've heard nothing about it. Like, well, isn't there typically th- like... That's ad... because it's been pushed back. Three years. Holy shit. I mean, that's a normal... Like, that's an entire movie production. Three years. Yeah. And uh, this movie's been worked on for... When was the first Avatar? 2009? Jesus. Maybe 2008? Um, And he has allegedly been working on the sequel since, like, 2010, 2011... And I, you know, I kind of joked about it the other day that if, if this isn't, if Avatar 2 isn't a life-changing experience, I hate to say it, but Jim, you've wasted your damn time. Yeah. Because, the weird thing is, I wish I could give credit to whoever said this, but Avatar is the most, is the highest grossing movie of all time. Yeah. No one can quote it. Come get some. Sure, sure, I don't know. (laughs) I mean, whatever anyone said, I'd go, yeah, sure. That was probably in it. That I, I one belligerent sergeant who was just like, Come get some! Um, I think that was Avatar. But I don't get how... Pe- like, who cares? Who? Other than James Cameron. None of... I can't remember... Like, none of the visuals stuck with me. 
Well, I mean, there's some visuals that I'm like, oh, that looked cool, like the floating at the time. But can you remember any of them now? Not really. But I mean, I mean, I can kind of remember the whole USB interface, organic interface thing that was just like it. But but so Avatar is getting like this weird resurgence because it's constantly in the news because well, the first one made so much money, like people have to care about the sequel. But, like, Disneyland or Disney World recently opened up their Pandora thing. Uh, Ubisoft announced their Avatar game. And I was like, who, who, who cares? It was probably to get ready for the December, the original December release date. Probably, but pushing it back three years, to me, that smells bad. A little bit. And... Also because he... I mean, but at the same time, it took seven years for something like Redline to come out. I mean, that is an animated movie. Yeah. So, obvious. And the visuals are just stunning. And every character feels alive. But, um... I mean, it's well known at this point, but we all do know that there's five Avatar movies, right? He put five? A, yeah, there's four sequels in the works. And if it takes this long to well, get the n- second he one... He gave them all release dates. But he already pushed the second one back, Colin. Yes. But now the release dates are 2020, 2021, 2024, and 2025. Why skip two years? I don't, I don't know at one point, but... I'm going to be well into my 40s. By the time this is done. If it keeps on that schedule, no. But that's a big if. Yeah, because I'm figuring he's going to push these back. Well, because there's... Where technology and everything... Is constantly I mean, it accelerates improving. exponentially. So... <laughs> Avatar... Two probably won't look good by the time it comes out at this point. No, because there's going to be better processes and better technologies to get it. That, but I don't know. Maybe I wouldn't be surprised if Avatar Two makes another billion dollars, because I think people just like. I'll be honest. I have to know. Yeah. At this point. Being pushed back years, multiple times. It better be the best. I gotta know. It better be the best goddamn viewing experience. Like, I, and I won't care if, if this movie's coming out, go on Rotten Tomatoes, and it has a 4%. I'm still gonna see it. I have to know. Yep. Have you been keeping up with uh, Riverdale? or? Yep, still watching that. Still watching uh, You know what, I'm glad you brought that up, because I watched... Uh, the most recent episode la- uh, yesterday, and boy, is that show still terrible. But I mean, I'm, you know, I'm watching it, so I can't complain. Is uh, Miss Grundy still? Nah, that's long gone. Oh, that's long gone. Dealing with more interpersonal shit and gangs. and Gangs? Yep, gangs. I don't remember there being... Southside serpents. Oh... Oh, that hurts. Yeah, I don't know. The show, I I have issues. Like, Jughead literally quotes, like, a Hot Topic t-shirt in the most <laughs> recent episode. And I'm like, ugh. Like, it was the most, one of the most painful lines of dialogue I've ever heard. Now, the show isn't always that bad, but he literally, they're like, oh, but Jughead, like, what, you know, what's going on, Jughead? And he's like, if you haven't noticed, I'm not normal. I was like, oh my god. It, oof. But then they're like, "Hey, let's watch," be, because it, in the show the the characters are supposed to be in high school, which means, uh, as a man in his mid twenties, that's the bad touch. But obviously, they're being played by people who are not in high school. Yeah. But it's still this weird little mental thing where it's like, "Hey, you want to see Cheryl Blossom and Veronica?" Have this sexy little dance up, and I'm like, I'm torn. Why is that? Colin? Well, because canonly they're like 16 years old. That's a little creepy, Colin. 
but they're not really 16. <laughs> and now I'm subtly Googling it to make sure what I'm saying is not very illegal. Oh, are we actually doing, you know, some sort of, uh... Okay, Betty's 20, it's fine, Veronica, okay. 22, perfect. Uh, I just, I just need one more. Oh, wow, she looks good for her age. <clears throat> She's 29. Colin, I'm 29. Yep. Are you saying that I don't look good for my age? No, you look good for your age. Mm. Uh, you know what? <clears throat> the last person doesn't have their own Wikipedia page, but... Everyone I looked at was above 18, so it is fine. I can continue with my creepy thoughts. Well, that's good. The, uh... The March for Science. You know what? I'm out to lunch on that. I don't know what the fuck that's about. It's basically uh, science scientists and researchers basically coming out and saying we don't like this whole like because there have been massive cuts to research mm -hmm. kind of in climate science mm -hmm. and uh, various other research. Uh, well, we live in, in modern but, days, you know, alternative facts. An age of ignorance. Yeah, and because I'll probably end up cutting out when we first started talking about this, because it was when we first when I first hit record. But like I, I was listening to people who are conspiracy theorists and like people who are very much oh that's alternative facts. It's creepy in a way to see how much you know you just throw around alternative facts and suddenly people go. Hey, yeah, you're right. Maybe they're wrong. Maybe science is full of shit. Maybe NASA is all a lie. Yeah. Um, but one of my favorite images from the rally so far has been this one woman. Mm -hmm. And she's got this... She's got this Bristol board th poster. And on it, it says... Uh, In uh, disaster movies, it always starts with a scientist being ignored. Fair point. Yeah. And I just sat there and I was like, you, you right on, hit it right out of the park with that <laughs> one, with that one alone. I enjoy, and it, it, like a lot of the other posters were, you know, your stereotypical uh, rallying posters, like science, sh blah, blah, blah. And then just this one woman had this nice little clip. I was like, I appreciate that. It's dark, but I, there's, a, there, there's like, What's, there's personality to it. It's not just a rallying cry. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if we're in that stage yet uh, of worry, but it's a, still a fair point. It, it's kind of one of those things, like, you know, in when it comes to superheroes versus supervillains, mm -hmm. the hero beats the villain. Yep. But... The hero has to keep beating the villain. If the hero loses once and the villain wins, like, sure, they can come back, but it's not, like, it's, it's kind of one of those things where we can't stop. You, you want to get doom and gloom for a minute? I mean, I mean we're, I, kind, we're, kind of we're kind of already there, yeah. Well, because it, while you are saying that, I was going to say, in this internet age... It doesn't matter what the alternative facts are. If, say, a meteor was coming, that news would get out. Yeah. Even if some people were saying, that's alternative facts. That meteor's not coming anywhere near us, blah, blah, blah. The real problem is if the people up top think it's alternative facts. Or, I shouldn't say the people up top. People paying the bills think that's a load of baloney and don't give people the money to, you know deter it in some way then there's a problem yeah good thing we got I mean, that arm oh because that's gonna stop <laughs> it's gonna be like that fuck it's gonna be like uh i had an analogy i i thought i was gonna pull out a gurren log in the analogy like with the arm and then i kind of sat there and i was like did 
Gurren Log did the, did they ever have to stop anything from being crushed? Like get, having themselves get crushed? And then I was like, no, I don't remember that much. <laughs> I might have to go rewatch Gurren Logan. I mean, that's always a good thing to do. Yeah. Well, let's keep on the same topic for a minute. Uh, of all the potential world disasters, what's the one you'd want most? What is the ideal way to end the world? Or at least massive damage, because, like, there's no way you can guarantee a complete mass extinction. Mm. You know what? After all this zombie shows and you, let's 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 actually see who would survive in an in an actual zombie apocalypse i would love to see that you know what i was gonna say meteor just because it's a sight i want to see in my lifetime even though it would mean i die because i'd want to be close enough to see it oh well, i mean it's almost happened a few times yeah but it's never been big enough for me to go neat well no because you sh- up until now it's mostly been um we've got a meteor heading towards us whoopsies it just missed well i mean like i mean i could technically achieve the same thing that i want of like if you look at all that old nuclear test footage when they're blown up nukes underwater and those battleships just see waves that are three miles up in the air irradiated i want to see that but no i think you make Most the best of the- point of time to time for people to put their money where their mouth is. is they, let let's see how how well someone can do in an actual zombie apocalypse. Yep. Because because let's like I'm so sick of fucking I'm sick of zombies. I'm sick of Walking Dead. I'm sick of everyone thinking that zombies are still popular. Let's just let's. Well, it appears at least in both movies and games, it's dying to game. have settled down. Yeah, it is not. A new zombie thing every week. Thank God. I don't actually think... I feel like we may have gone a full year without anything new, really. Yeah. Now let's have Mecha take its rightful place. That won't happen. It needs to happen. People don't like mechs. I do. And everyone should like mechs. They're giant robots. But if you think you could survive the zombie apocalypse, why don't you send us an email at powermostpodcast at gmail.com and we can tell you that you're wrong because chances are you're not nearly in shape as you need to be you want to insult us in a much quicker format follow the show at uh, power moose pod on twitter or you can insult me personally at metal gear whale or call out duncan on his lack of gams at append gray <laughs> lack of yams <laughs> is the least of my issues. <laughs> I've gone back to listen to some of our podcasts and some of the statements I made are wildly just off base. Duncan, I just had to live fact check if I was finding children attractive. <laughs> Ooh. If it's a competition of who said worse things on the air. Is that now, the F- I, now I was in the clear. I double checked. <laughs> is but... that the FBI knocking? <laughs> Oh, and if somehow this audio gets somewhere other than our YouTube channel, our YouTube channel is just Power Moose. You know, we do gaming stuff now, and uh, I'm trying to get my shit together because, boy, if you just stop paying attention once, you build up a backlog real fast. I got a lot of videos. We're going to go from uh, maybe one video a week to... Maybe two a day every day for the what? next week or two. What have you been <laughs> doing? <laughs> I've been doing... Well, I didn't... I've only posted one part of our entire last Overwatch stream. Yeah. And then I streamed yesterday. I, I, and that's going to be multiple episodes. And we're going to stream when we're done recording this. Okay. So yeah, we're... Big, big increase in content this week. <laughs> because I, I think we're going to try and us together sit down at least once a week and i'll probably continue sitting down at least once a week but i will say it's it's hard it's hard to stream by yourself yeah i don't think i can do it and be uh interesting well because typically when i'm playing i am very focused on the game and to have people 
like this is very wishful thinking but to have people like an audience to try and entertain i can't do that well it helps so, so from when i streamed yesterday I'll, I'll spoil one of the games because i posted it this morning i played portal nights um if it's a brand new game new to me lots to talk about because i can just talk about the game yeah when i'm playing isaac for my 1600th hour I'm just real quiet because there's not a lot for me to no, say. No, you're you're mostly focusing. <laughs> but I guess that's it for this week. Everyone should go check out. I'm sure there was an anime that came out at some point in time. Uh, Silver Spoon. It's a really great uh, anime about uh, agricultural studies. And I know I, I know setting. I've shit on Duncan for giving more than one, but I'm gonna say Witchblade. Get out.